السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters I'm on a journey but I thought I'd still do the boost in order to reach out to you guys and to be able to say a word or two that might be beneficial may Allah grant us paradise I'm actually at an airport known as Bole International Airport in Addis Ababa It's a beautiful airport. I found a little corner where I'm just recording and inshallah I'll try my best to upload this before my next flight. Now, when you're on a journey, you need to know Allah gives you the option of fasting or not fasting. If you don't, you can make it up later and there is no sin upon you. Whether the journey was difficult or easy plays no role in that particular leeway. But I have a habit that if the journey is quite easy, I will always fast. In fact, I I, I barely have not fasted during a journey unless I've been really unwell and that gives you the next reason that you may choose not to fast is when you're unwell and if you have both where you're on a journey and you're feeling unwell then you have all the more reason not to fast but it's not compulsory not to fast when you're on a journey so you may do the fast I don't like to make up fasts after Ramadan I'd like those fasts to be the voluntary ones rather than making up fasts that I've missed. Now, that is a complete blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're unwell, you're on a journey, you're allowed not to fast. For example, if you're breastfeeding, you may fast and it's good to fast actually. But if you cannot breastfeed uh, because of the fast, then you have the option of not fasting and making it up later. The same applies to a pregnant woman. You may fast. I know many pregnant women, in fact, most of those whom I know would actually prefer to fast during Ramadan because they say the baby actually takes its nutrients from you and will not be affected by the fast, but you may be affected by the fast. So you've got to look at it because it's definitely not easy to make it up later. It's definitely not easy. So it depends on your health, whether you can manage or not, but there are options for those people that I've just mentioned now and they may make it up later. If you're unwell or you cannot make up a fast after Ramadan because you simply can't fast due to the nature of your illness or your age etc. In that case you can give out a fidya. A fidya is to feed uh, a certain amount uh, for every single fast. So you can find out from your local scholars what exactly the fidya is uh, in, in terms of your locality, your country and so on. Today I want to speak about something very important and that is women are told that when they're on their menstrual cycle they don't fast. Okay? When they're on their menstrual cycle they don't pray either, meaning the five daily salah. As for supplications, dua, adhkar, etc, etc, all that is permissible. But what's not permissible is the prayer, the five daily salah and the fasting. So the five daily salah you don't have to make those up. But the fasting you have to make it up after Ramadan and that's not easy. Many would have from five to 10 days every Ramadan that they need to make up. Now, some people feel sad and this is why I've, I'm making this video to let you know, don't be sad if you haven't fasted in the month of Ramadan due to your menstrual cycle because happiness should be in obeying the instruction of Allah. When he says fast, I will fast, I'm rewarded. When he says don't fast, I won't fast, I'm rewarded equally, subhanAllah. So. If Allah has told you something, surely your happiness, your success, your goodness lies in adopting his command. So when you're on your menstrual cycle and you haven't fasted, you need to be happy that I am adopting what Allah has instructed me to do. And I'm not going to fast because he doesn't want me to fast right now. Subhanallah. So continue with your adhkar and with all other ibadah as far as possible. But remember, you don't pray and you don't... Um, you don't fast. Uh, those are the two that come to my mind uh, connected to the month of Ramadan. My beloved sisters, you need to understand that after Ramadan, it's not going to be easy to make up uh, the fasts. Now, people ask about the six fasts of Shawwal, which are very, very important. Now, those need to be done separately from the ones you've missed. For those six, you cannot connect your intentions and say, I'm going to do my qada, which is what I have to make up, and I'm going to do my fast for shawwal, which is the voluntary. The reason is, the fast of shawwal, the reward of it 
is actually going to be as though you fasted the whole year because every good deed is multiplied by 10. So I need to have the month completely, which will then be multiplied by 10 equivalent to 10 months. And I need another six days, which would then be multiplied by 10 equivalent to 60 days. That's two months. So 10 months and two months makes the whole year. If I haven't completed the number in this case, then I don't get that full reward. So in the case of the Shawwal fasts in particular, you need to make them separately for the reason that I've just mentioned. And this is the opinion of the majority as far as I know. Now, my sisters, the question is, what should I do first? Should I do my leftover fasts or should I do the Shawwal fasts? There are several opinions of the scholars. It is preferred, obviously. Some say you should do your qada first because that's farad, it's compulsory. And then you can do your shawwal later. And some say that for as long as you've done the six fasts of shawwal, you have a leeway to do your qada for several months. It doesn't, your qada doesn't have to be in the month of shawwal. So if you connect those opinions together, uh, I think you should try to do your uh, at least six fasts within Shawwal, which would be the six fasts of Shawwal, and try and make up as many of the qada that you have. But uh, if you haven't made up all your qada in Shawwal, don't worry. You can make them up as soon as you can, inshallah. So may Allah make it easy for us. I thought I'd clarify this because there are other opinions. We respect them. But this is uh, something that I found would be uh, much more practical, much easier as well. And there is nothing to say that your qada has to be in the month of Shawwal. Okay? But the six fasts of Shawwal have to be in the month of Shawwal. So from an evidence perspective, uh, it would be more appropriate to say exactly what I've said. Now, the, the people who say it's compulsory to do your qada first, they base it on the fact that, but qada is farad. But then again, qada, you've been given a leeway to do it up to perhaps even the next Ramadan in some cases, or at your earliest convenience. May Allah make it easy for us. So this is why I'd say, my sisters, don't despair. Don't be saddened. Allah make it easy for every one of us and grant us goodness. And it's something that really needed, needs to be addressed. And here I have addressed it. You do have, that's not a leeway. That's an instruction from Allah Almighty to say, hang on, I don't want you to fast. You say, oh Allah, if you told me not to fast, I'm not going to fast. And I know I will be rewarded for obeying your instruction because the reward is for obeying Allah's instruction. May Allah make it easy for all my sisters going through the menstrual cycle or any other issues, those who are pregnant and expecting, uh, those who perhaps have other health issues, whatever else it may be, those who are mothers who are breastfeeding, may Allah make it easy for you, my beloved sisters, and may, may we be from among those who are more conscious of this type of, uh, of, of the people who go through all of this. Uh, I'd like to stop there and end, and I say, أقول قولي هذا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته